Hey everybody, welcome back to Gothic. So last time we went over a little bit of technical stuff and got kind of the gist of the story. Just to recap that, we've been tossed into this mine area that's been surrounded by a barrier that nobody can get out of. Because uh, there was a bit of a magical mishap in setting it up. And then there's some stuff going outside with like orcs and the king and crap. Uh, and then inside, prisoners have kind of taken control of this, I guess. Because everybody who was originally mining in here is a prisoner. And, uh, yeah, there are a few factions warring for, or maybe not warring, but perhaps vying for control of the situation in here. Uh, it seems, and we talked to a guy named Diego, who gave us a couple pointers, and that's kind of where we're at now. Now, just to, again, address the elephant in the room, this game is capped at 20 frames per second. While you're running around and doing stuff, and I'm aware that, yes, there are mods um, that you can use for modern installations of the game to address this, but I'm presenting the game as is right off the discs on a Windows native Windows 98 machine for better or for worse here. So that's why it looks the way it does. Okay. Uh, and yeah, it does like the frame rate settles out when you're just standing around after a while, which is very strange, but let's get started here. I will say the controls of this game are very janky, but they, once you get used to them, I mean, they, they follow their own logic kind of, uh, but good luck figuring them out without a manual. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, I'm also, uh, I've got a save set up here for uh, just general walking around. Because I'm about to do something perhaps ill-advised <laughs> that I found in my testing. So if we go this way, yeah, I was like, what's this, uh, what's this glowing going on? And then I went a little farther, and then that happened. <laughs> so that's what happens when you try to escape the barrier, and... For whatever reason, yeah, it's just, that's it. You just sit there and then you're, you're dead. And the game doesn't, reload doesn't do anything. You gotta figure that out on your own sport. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, reload this game. We'll get started for real this time. So I don't know exactly what the, uh, the deal with the torches is get our inventory on the, the right hand side here and we can scroll through various item types and all that kind of stuff. We've got our, our letter uh, that we got in the cinematic as well that we got to deliver to the mages at the old camp, which is kind of where we're headed. And then we just picked up this torch. So let's do this. I don't know if torches burn out after a while or how they work, but I know that we can do this and I don't know if there's a reason to do it. If we go a little closer. There we go, we can do that, and then that, that'll light that torch. And then we can come over here and light that that torch. And so the way I've got my control set up, I'm using like Shift ESDF to do everything. It'll make sense if you try to play the game yourself, um, but normally you use like Control and Up. The game's kind of meant to be played without a mouse, I think. Um, but yeah, hold Shift and then we kind of target this thing, and then I can push E or what would normally be up uh, arrow and interact with things that way. So yeah, super, super strange, but it, I mean, I've gotten used to it surprisingly quickly. Maybe this is my system shock training kicking in <laughs> a little bit, but there you go. Thank God all those torches are now lit. Do they stay lit? I don't know. Was there a reason to do that? I still don't know. I've got, looks like some, some kind of rotten meat on there. And now I, I think there's a way you can jump in the water and like dive and stuff. I just lit my torch. I think if well we could we could put it down. If we do this. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Didn't go in the water. Here, let's um let's try going for a little bit of a swim. I'm not sure I know how to dive. It's probably in the manual. We can do this. Maybe. Uh yeah, let's just take a look here. Um, no, none of those are particularly useful for diving. Maybe there, maybe it's something you got to learn. We got to get a silver scale like in Zelda. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Unless, yeah, that doesn't really seem to do it either. But uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything down there. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll get out of here, I guess. We've kind of dilly-dallied enough, I think. We're, we're going to try to get out of here. There we go. Please. 
Please get out of the... Oh, maybe it's because I'm in combat mode. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you um, push a button to go into, in and out of combat mode. Then you can swing at people. If you're uh, feeling spicy. Alright, let's get our torch back. And uh, we'll, we'll get cracking here. So yeah, when you're in combat mode, you drop your torch on the ground. Which is kind of interesting. I uh, I don't know that I like that so much, but <laughs> it is what it is. This game has like a little, sort of a sense of realism to it. Yeah, there's some guys right there. Like, for example, if we had a weapon, these guys would be kind of upset if we busted it out. Just want to make sure there's not another torch back here to, to light. Ah, uh, yeah, there is right here. Let's light it. All the torches must be lit. And yeah, I think there's a day and night cycle in this game, maybe? I assume. I, uh... I don't know, I haven't really gotten any farther than... Uh, halfway down this path, I guess, really, so... Just doing some testing. There we go, we'll light that one. And then, yeah, if we want to climb this ladder, the same deal as, like, with lighting the torches. Just hold the, the button, and then you push up, and up we go. So, these guys... Where have I, can I play with this thing? I can. I don't think they're going to like it when I do this, so... Did I close the door? Kind of. <laughs> just, just trying to learn how the game works here. We'll talk to these guys in a sec. Maybe I got a... <laughs> no, it's one way or the other, basically. Yeah, I don't know. Regardless, uh, all right, well, I'm next to you. Let's have a chat. Very close to <laughs> together. How's it going? Good. None of the rogues from the new camp are to be seen anywhere. He doesn't have much to say. Uh, yeah, this guy's voice sounds like super duper text to speech, but I, I don't think it is. I don't know. <laughs> if it is, that would be that would be really interesting. All right, this is Ori. What are you doing here? Making sure no one gets near the exchange place, especially one of those cutthroats from the new camp. You're the new guy they chucked in today, right? That's me. Then you'd better watch out for the guys from the new camp. I work for the old camp, same as the others you saw at the exchange place. I assume you've talked to Diego. Uh, we did. Yes, I have. Good. Then you know what's what around here. This guy sounds like Hoggle from Labyrinth a little bit. <laughs> it's an interesting mix. Okay, we got a few things we can talk to this guy about. I guess we better just go down the list here. Why do I have to watch out for the guys from the new camp? Compared to the new camp, the old camp's a quiet peaceful sort of place. The new camp doesn't get any deliveries from the outside world. Most of the rogues there just steal whatever they need. Interesting. And the old camp? The ore barons have everything under control. Next in line to them are the guards, followed by the shadows. The diggers are the lowest. Everyone who arrives here starts out as a digger. If you want to become something better than that, you'll have to get accepted as a shadow first. So I guess it's some, some kind of like cast system? What the hell is a shadow? <laughs> Actually, I think they're in the manual. I think the shadows are like thieves or something. It's, it's kind of a strange hierarchy. Uh, well, okay. We'll keep that in mind. When I was washed ashore, one of the guys punched me in the face. They do that to all the newcomers. They call it Standing Godfather. Oh, are all the guys like that in the old camp? We do have a few suckers, but they won't touch you as long as you pay them protection money. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen, because uh, first off, we don't have any money. I saw a woman being sent down with the goods. Yeah, the ore barons get everything they want. Do you mean to say the king exchanges women for ore? They're convicted criminals too, of course. But if Gomez hadn't asked for them, they'd be sitting in some dungeon or other. I'm not sure what's worse. 
That's interesting. So, the whole premise... Well, no, I guess the premise is that people can't get out. They can get in. So I guess once you're in, you're in. But somehow we can still send the ore out. So I guess it's only like living creatures that can't get out. Something like that. I'm looking for a weapon. There should be some old weapons by the derelict mine further down the canyon. But don't go and start a war with nothing but a rusty pickaxe for a weapon. Those things are slow and heavy. An inexperienced fighter should never use one of them unless it's an emergency. All right. You'd better make sure you reach the old camp in one piece. I guess we should find ourselves a pickaxe. Or something better, ideally, but we'll see. Is there anything uh, actually up here? I know we can go down there. Never gone up here, though. Uh, no. Seems like there's, well, unless we can jump up. Yeah, I can't really jump up there. All right, well, I guess we'll just try cruising down here. Are we going to take damage from this fall? No. I'm sure there is falling damage in the game, or at least I assume. Oh, yeah. We got these guys, meat bugs. These are called, like, Fleischwanzas or something like that in, in the manual. I guess they didn't change the German name. And we get blueberries. I don't know exactly what these do, aside from probably restore HP. Come here, bug. I'm gonna eat ya. Supposedly, these are tasty bugs. And they give me 10 XP. <laughs> um, and then if we exit combat mode, we can interact. And then grab the meat. Yeah, it's definitely takes some use to get into this control, uh, getting uh, used to this control style, but... I... Uh, it's uh, it's not so bad so far. I think it's going to get a lot worse once we have a full inventory, but I guess we'll see how things go here. All right, give me my torch back. Let's continue down the road, I guess. Arrows. We don't have a bow, but we'll take the arrows. I actually didn't even look to see if I could interact with that skeleton. Yeah, the movement is a little bit janky when you're trying to, like, strafe and stuff or back up. You do, like, these little hops rather than just walk backwards smoothly. Right, now, we already killed you. And, yeah, if you just tap forward, you do a little hop forward. Very strange. And we can also, we can walk as well. But uh, it doesn't seem like I can do anything with that skeleton. So let's try... Got a tumbler. What does a tumbler do? I guess that's just like a cup, basically. We got a chest here. The chest has beer. Eleven coins. Some somebody left those there, I guess. Doesn't really look like much of a coin. Another torch and a uh, pick lock rather than a lock pick. Yeah, these coins are a little bit suspect looking. I don't know if they're rendering quite correctly or not, to be honest with you. I feel like maybe not. But uh, regardless, we'll, we'll take them and be on our way here, I think. What do we got here? We've got more blueberries. We've got more blueberries. And uh, I don't think I can do anything with the barrels. Maybe I could smash them. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it. All right, we got a pickaxe. Very nice. Doesn't seem like there's any way to get in there. At least not from this side. I don't know. Maybe there's a way to get around. Could be interesting. We could actually equip our pickaxe. We go all the way back to weapons. I think, um... Yeah, I can't really... Equip the arrows without a bow, I don't think. Or maybe you don't equip them at all, I'm not sure. But there you go. There's our pickaxe equipped. Seems like we can go up there. We've got this rickety bridge here. Uh, yeah, let's... 
go across the bridge for now, I think. If I can manage to save the game here. What is this creature? This is a juvenile mole rat. Have at thee. There we go. He didn't even hit us. I think a pickaxe is a perfectly suitable weapon. Ooh, an ore nugget. Give me that, sure. Ooh, this guy's got a rusty sword uh, in his back. That's not supposed to be there. Got some raw meat. I'm assuming there's some cooking and uh, crafting and that kind of stuff in this game. I don't know. I mean, I really haven't looked into it too much. It's just one of those games that has kind of been on my radar for a while and just never got around to playing it. Um, I guess we should probably take the torch back. Give me that. And uh, I guess we'll have a quick peek around here. Oh, hang on. Was that the... No, it's the post. I thought that was another torch to light. What else have we got? Some kind of cooking setup. Oh, hang on. Rice schnapps. Yeah, this text is really hard to read against this particular background, at least, just because of the low, I guess, contrast color difference. All right, I think we, we can go up by um, space or wall jump or whatever, basically. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I think we can get up here anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> There's definitely falling damage. <laughs> uh, we might have to kill the rat again. I don't think I saved. First, uh, or no, I guess second. Second death of the, the playthrough. <laughs> this game does not seem to hold your hand too much. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do this guy again. That's fine. So only take a sec. Oh, we pop over. Oh, he hit us this time. That's unfortunate. Okay. Take the stuff. I assume the loot is uh, static. Although, I don't know. Maybe there's some randomized loot in here. I don't know. There's our torch back. And then if we can get the ore nugget, that'd be good. Take our sword. And the uh, rice schnapps. Anything else? I think that was it. That was over here, really. Uh, and then we just need to equip our uh, uh, sword here. Because it's a little bit better. We can see the stats. Sword's only one-handed. The pickaxe is two-handed, I guess. Although, I think uh, in the manual it says, like, sometimes... Like, if you're inexperienced, weapons are two-handed when they should be one-handed. And we are certainly inexperienced. You can see our character sheet here. I assume we'll be able to level these skills up at some point. But... Uh, not just yet. So maybe then we won't drop our torch in combat if we're using a one-handed weapon. Uh, one thing I do want to show off real quick is just that uh, if you go into walk mode, you uh, you won't jump off cliffs. <laughs> the game won't let you fall. So that's nice, I guess. Now, how the hell do I get up here? I know that's, that it's possible. Maybe... Let's look around. There we go. So we gotta hold, maybe hold the jump key, and then push forward. Not entirely sure how that works. Uh, what do we got? More arrows, more coins, more beer. Thank God. All right. What's this guy got? Another pickaxe and another torch. We'll take. Both of these. I don't know if there's a, like a weight limit in this game or what. Seems like this guy died from, from a cave-in. It's unfortunate. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, it's the chest I just grabbed. Kind of almost seems like I could jump over to that thing, but do I even dare? <laughs> we'll try real fast, I guess. Oh, we actually made it. To what end? Why do I want to be up here? I suspect that I don't. <laughs> Let's just go back to the other place. 
again. What a jump. Incredible. All right, I think there's another way to go up over here, though. Is that right? Kind of, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, we can actually jump quite high. Should the mood strike? Oop, get back up there, please. Got some kind of plant here. We'll grab that. Got to be careful here. Probably better to jump up here, I guess. Yeah. All right, what's up here? Got a critter, I see. And uh, looks like a couple more of those rat things. What's this guy? <laughs> Juvenile scavenger. There is like a little bit of timing to the combat as well. I was like swinging my sword back and forth there. All right, we got some meat. Very nice. Diego did recommend that we don't explore too much, but I'm gonna anyway. <laughs> Because if you like it, what's have we got over here? Looks like, is that a god? I think it's a goblin way over there. One thing at a time. Maybe we should drop a save while we're up here, just in case things go terribly wrong. All right, let's drop our torch here. I don't think we need it right now. Have at thee. <laughs> Aha, we can actually, we can block as well. Oh, got us uh, pretty good there. There we are. All right, that's two dead mole rats. What do you got? You got meat. And I'm going to guess you got meat. He's got meat. What else do we got? Anything uh, yonderly here? We got ore nuggets, sure. Tumbler. I don't know if we need the tumblers, but I'm going to take them anyway. Looks like another cave-in situation. Also, yeah, you might notice like a little bit of screen tearing. Well, or a lot of screen tearing. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any kind of V-Sync option in this game or even in the config file. Uh, in this, you know, unmodified version. So, just it is what it is. It's doing the same screen tearing on my CRT as you're probably seeing on, on your screen. So, it is what it is. It's just how the, how the game... Was, I guess. A club. Interesting. And uh, the potion's also quite interesting. A lot of dead people out here, I'm noticing. What is this potion? Essence of healing does 50 HP. What about uh, just some of this other stuff? Food. So if we just eat some blueberries, we get 10 HP back. That sounds pretty good. I don't know if we should save those or not. Alright, so this club does less damage than the sword. Also has required strength, but can we use it without dropping our torch? Probably not. Look at it. It's a little bigger than I thought. That's a Bam Bam Club. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, it's still two-handed, so I don't think there's any reason to... Use that over the rusty sword. Oh, yeah, I don't know if... Oh, do weapons break in this game? I don't know. I guess we'll see. I know we got this guy up here we got to deal with. Oh! These guys are, uh, spicy. You can kind of get around them a little bit. This guy's uh, actually quite a lot tougher than... Ooh, a lot tougher than the, the other critters we've been fighting. There we go. we take his club? We can. How about that? What else has he got? Nothing? Really? He's got nothing else. Alright, well... We got the ADXP at least, so that's pretty good. So we got one more thing... To exterminate up here, <laughs> and then uh, everything out here will be extinct. 
I don't know if there's a way to, to see uh, our levels. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 280 XP, next level 500. Okay. Let's grab, go back and we'll grab our torch real fast here. I don't know that we need the torch, but I don't know. I lit it. It's mine. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it for now. So one thing I'm going to show off real quick, as I mentioned, I would do this in the last video is just that, um, that's a, don't jump down there. That's a long drop. Let's save the game. Since we've been doing a little bit of fighting here. And yeah, if we, if we jump into the menu here, Go to settings and graphics. We can juice the, the visual range quite high. And see like that town down there. But look at that. See that pop in. And like the the level of detail models kind of shifting and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, as much as I would love to have the level of, or the view distance be wicked high. Uh, I think that pop in and LOD shifting looks kind of like really bad. So I think the fog is here for a reason. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to just leave it, leave the visual range on 100% and let the fog do its thing. I think for this playthrough, um, I don't know. We may play around with it later, but I think it's probably for the best to just leave it as is. All right. Is there anything else to do? We killed you already. I don't think there's anything else up here, so let's go. It's a little bit hard to see some things sometimes just because of the contrast or the... Well, yeah, I guess the contrast is oh, it's just kind of low. Oh, boy, can I get out of here without killing myself? <laughs> I think I can. We just... Actually, it won't even let me jump down there. There we go. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's a little bit too far. There is an acrobatic skill that we can learn somehow. And that might help with that falling situation. But I guess we'll have to take a slightly longer path down. There's also magic in this game and ranged combat, which we'll check out. At some point, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, just go down here. Ooh, we can actually like slide. That's interesting. Then we go down here, and I think we can just jump down to here. Okay, it was a little, a little scary, but we've uh, we've made it. And actually, no, no, we don't even want to go down this way. We want to go this way. Continue on down the path, I guess. So what else have we got down here? See, like, this actually looks like a smooth frame rate for whatever reason. I could pull up fraps and uh, <laughs> see for sure, but, yeah, like, sometimes it's, it seems like it's not locked at 20. Just most of the time, like, like there. But while we were coming down here, it wasn't so bad. It's very, very strange. I've never encountered a game that behaves quite like this one. Blueberries... Some more critters here. An old sword? Is that better than a rusty sword? It is. Oh, but it requires 10 strength. Also one-handed. So what if we try to equip it? Does it just do, like, less damage? Because I think we have... Oh, no, we do have 10 strength. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter. It's just better. So we've got like three weapon upgrades in the first two seconds <laughs> or yeah, first 20 minutes of this game here. That's interesting. Uh, let's just grab this other blueberry real quick. And handle this critter here. Whoops, don't do that. Get the sword back out. Get the sword back out. I'm pushing the wrong buttons. Get a, get a little flustered here. Ow. How dare you. Okay. That, that was uh, that was not my finest work. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, we got another club. A couple more arrows. Actually, a few arrows. There's a couple in the tree here. If I can get the game to cooperate anyway. I don't know if I need these arrows for any particular thing, but there we go. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just leave that other one there. I can't can't seem to target it very effectively. And then this guy, we already looted. All right. And there's another guy down the way here, so I'm just going to take care of this before I grab my torch. This one's going a little better. And there we go. All right. Trying to take the, the meat, but I can't seem to. There we go. Not sure what was going on there exactly. All right, grab our, our trusty torch here, and we'll be on our way. All right, this is about as far as I've played. I actually didn't even go up to that hilltop that we checked out earlier, so... Anything uh, from this point on, I really don't know too much about. To be honest with you, aside from... Uh, what's in the manual, basically. What was that? Was there something on the ground? No, I guess not. But it seems like that's the camp there. We've got a little bit farther to go, but I think we'll uh, we'll call this one here. I'm going to try to keep these episodes a little bit on the shorter side. Maybe make them a little easier to watch, since they're <laughs> already a little tough to look at with the low frame rate, I feel. Uh, yeah, so when we come back, we'll... I don't know, maybe we'll jump off this little, little ledge here or go that way, I don't know. Either way, it seems like that's our destination, so I, uh, I don't think we should go too far off the beaten path. Until we get a chance to check out the town. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure all that stuff out next time.